the visibility so it is not preventing the multiple threads from manipulating the variable in synchronized keyword we had this concept of mutex or mutual exclusion that's where it simple code now let's run this expectation is firstly it will wait for five seconds it's then the flag on that when the use of logs will be heavy weight we have already discussed this and when the value of a variable is not dependent on the previous value all this read modify and write what does it mean suppose you're trying to increment this value to 5 plus plus first i will read the value of 5 then i will add 1 to 5 5 plus 1 but I'm hi everyone welcome to my channel code with ease by varsha this is a playlist on threads coding questions which we have been doing so far so synchronized keyword is something which we have largely used so far on the threads and concurrency world but we have not much talked about but we have not much talked about uh, atomic keyword and volatile keyword the clarity of understanding the differences between all these three keywords is extremely extremely important when you are trying to write effective thread safe code and by mistake if you use one keyword in place of another one you might end up uh, with data inconsistency race condition and whatnot so that is the focus for today to understand where to use which keyword effectively we'll see some code demo also and we'll talk about visibility problem of volatile key volatile keyword that we will discuss today so what are we waiting for let's begin so let's start by talking about so synchronized keyword so as we know why do we use this keyword of course to write thread safe code how we are able to achieve this because synchronized keyword helps us to avoid the race conditions right how does it do that by ensuring that only one thread by ensuring that only one thread can access that particular shared resource right so synchronized keyword we can use it like synchronized method or uh, we can use it with code blocks and static methods, right? Now, what are we telling? Mutual exclusion. One thread trying to access a synchronized method or block at a time. Synchronized method or synchronized block at a time. This is how we are ensuring the thread safety. And this is what we call mutual exclusion, that we are excluding that particular, we are safeguarding or protecting that particular code from being accessed by multiple threads. Simple. When we do this, current thread uses the intrinsic lock that is bound to an object. So we are not explicitly handling the locking. The locks are being handled intrinsically. What is the disadvantage? The, so the biggest disadvantage is increasing the wait time of the thread and lowering the performance. Now, since synchronized keyword guarantees the thread safety by ensuring the mutual exclusion that only one thread will be allowed to enter the critical section of the code while it is protecting that, it is not always the best option out there. Because what happens is, suppose you have this particular section of the code and the reason why we say critical section of the code is synchronized keyword should only be used to protect the critical section of the code, not the entire code. Otherwise, it lowers the performance. Now, suppose if you use, keep on using synchronized keyword again and again, what essentially it is doing is it is preventing multiple threads from entering this particular code block, right? So until and unless the thread which is doing the operation within this code block is done and it's done and it is releasing the lock, everyone else will be waiting for the lock. Until and unless they get the lock, they will not be able to enter this particular code block and do the data manipulation, which is why it increases the waiting time of the threads altogether, thus lowering the performance. So, unintended use, unintended use of usage of synchronized keyword or unnecessary usage of synchronized keyword, not understanding where should you use and where should you limit, like when should you say no to a synchronized keyword is so very important. Because if you keep on using or if you overuse this particular keyword, your entire performance of the application is going to slow down. And this is the reason why we have brought about, why we want to talk about the volatile and the atomic keywords also, so that we know what are the available tools with us when we write, when we want to write thread safe code. And another thing is, it can only be method applied to method and blocks and it cannot be applied to variables. So let's talk about the volatile keyword now. Remember, it is applied on a variable and synchronized keywords was not being applied on a variable. Uh, so it's a simple and lightweight mechanism, but it doesn't involve any heavy synchronization and it can be applied on a variable. The thing is, it can be accessed by multiple Java threads, which are going to manipulate the same variable at the same time. The biggest problem that volatile keyword is trying to solve is the visibility problem. So first, we try to understand this. It is this keyword is being applied on a variable that is accessed by multiple Java threads. And suppose you have a variable which is being accessed by multiple threads, T1, T2, T3. You want to ensure the changes that you're making to this variable, let's say it's a Boolean flag, all the threads simultaneously are able to see the change. How do we guarantee this? So for understanding that, you have to understand what is the visibility problem that we are trying to solve. Every thread will maintain its own local caching. 
okay so any changes it will make so let's say t1 made a changes so those changes are only going to be seen by t1 because it is saved in its own cache t2 and t3 will see their on their own version of the variable a's value which they have stored in their local cache after some time when the cache gets invalidated they will be able to eventually see the correct value but for some time they will only see the stale value which is coming from their cache when we declare a variable as volatile what happens is when instructing the jvm that you do the read and write directly from the main memory and not from this thread local cache we will make a detailed video on thread local also but this is the main difference as a result of which it so as a result of that it guarantees the visibility so it is not preventing the multiple threads from manipulating the variable in synchronized keyword we had this concept of mutex or mutual exclusion where it prevented the multiple threads from accessing and from modifying a certain section of the code but here it will allow the access and modification of the variable simultaneously but at the same time it will also ensure that the visibility of the changes that is made to that variable is also seen by all the threads as mentioned this can be used on variables and classes and like we said it is lock lock free and lightweight let's see a code demo to understand more about how volatile keyword is helping us to achieve this now look at this code to understand the significance of volatile keyword we have two threads writer thread reader thread there is a boolean flag which is initially false writer thread is trying to wait for 5 seconds and then setting the flag to true reader thread is going to wait until and unless the flag is equal to true it will keep on waiting if it is it will now say that flag is now true that's it simple code now let's run this expectation is firstly it will wait for 5 seconds then the flag will be set to true and the reader thread once it is because if the writer thread has already set it to true reader thread should also be seeing that flag has been set to true because it's the same variable static variable and then it should print this flag is now true but let's see what happens so there's a wait of 5 seconds and we see that the flag has been set to true which means this is the line which has executed now since the flag has been set to true this thread whenever it got a chance to run it would have tried to check this now if it is true already it should have printed this but we are seeing that it is not able to print what is happening now is it is not able to read or the visibility of this variable is not reached the reader thread it is reader thread might be still reading from its own local cache now it's been so long but the this out is still not coming over here it means that the reader thread might not be able to see the change it is still reading the stale data which is the flag is still false the flag is still false for reader thread it's not true what happens if we change this to volatile so i'll just simply say make this volatile right and now run this again a wait of 5 seconds flag has been set to true and immediately flag is now true so as we can see that almost immediately the flag's value is being reflected or being visible to the reader thread which was not happening in the case when we were not using volatile this is the usage this is the use case of where volatile keyword plays a big role now only for this small change just for seeing the flag's value or reflecting the flag's value if you would have used synchronize that would have been an overkill that you don't need to do this right so now let's see what are the scenarios under which volatile keyword can be used firstly if you want to ensure that the changes made by one thread to a shared variable are immediately visible like the code that we have seen without the need of explicit locking or without the need of any heavy synchronization again if you have a simple flag or something which is any primitive data being accessed by multiple threads when the variable is being read frequently but modified infrequently why this point is said that when the flag or the variable is being read frequently and modified infrequently means multiple threads are trying to read the value they want to see they want to see the reflected they want to see the visible changes in the variable but they don't want to modify anything in that variable okay because whenever modification involves that becomes like a compound operation and that is where atomic keyword can come in handy we'll talk more about that when the use of logs will be heavy weight we have already discussed this and when the value of a variable is not dependent on the previous value it's independent of what we had previously we just want to show the exact change like the immediate change what has happened in the variable right so these are some of the use cases where you should be using volatile now moving on so now let's talk about atomic keyword in java we usually have atomic integer and there are many such atomic classes under the concurrent java util concurrent package we'll see that so why do we need to talk about atomic as we have seen the synchronized keyword when you are using it that is heavy duty performance 
okay so whenever you are using synchronized keyword although synchronized keyword also guarantees atomicity right but volatile keyword doesn't guarantee atomicity that is why this atomic thing is coming into picture but now let's try to understand what is the atomicity any compound operation if you are doing incrementing value decrementing value that compound operation that should be done as a single indivisible unit we will see that with an example now single so when i say any compound operation to be done as a single indivisible unit that is where we need this atomicity into picture synchronized blocks are providing us atomicity volatile is not providing us atomicity that is the drawback and that is why this has been introduced that we can understand but how is it coming into play let's see with an example suppose you have this integer n5 the increment decrement operations whenever you are trying to do usually they are not atomic unless you explicitly mention because let's say you are doing an increment operation x++ plus plus. these will include three steps we call this read modify and write what does it mean suppose you are trying to increment this value to 5 plus plus first i will read the value of 5 then i will add 1 to 5 5 plus 1 but i am not writing 6 yet in the third step i will write to the memory 5 plus 1 is 6 so first i read it then i modify it change it like add 1 or uh, decrement 1 whatever then i finally write it so the problem is i have do i am doing reading this then i am modifying it 5 plus 1 and ultimately i am writing to six. problem so what is the problem in between these operations in between any of these the phase of reading modifying and write if there is another thread which is coming in and wrongly modifying or wrongly writing it my threads values will get corrupt threads value will get corrupt and that is what will lead to data inconsistency that is why you have to ensure the atomicity or the single indivisible unit thing now when we are saying that volatile keyword is not giving us the when we are saying that volatile keyword for increment decrement operation can lead to risk condition we will show you a code snippet to show that why volatile keyword when we use it although it guarantees the visibility problem to be solved but volatile is not atomic and because it is not atomic so what i need is any any time i want to do any compound operation on a shared variable atomically without using synchronization try to understand i want to do a compound operation i want to do this on a shared variable and I don't want to use any synchronization. So when I'm doing compound operation on a shared variable, I want the atomicity in place, but I don't want to use any heavy duty synchronization. Then this atomic classes will come into picture. Let's see now a code example in the next page. I've taken the screenshots of both, where we'll try to compare what is happening when you're using volatile and when you're trying to increment decrement and when you're using not volatile, but you're using the atomic classes. So this is the first example where we are using volatile keyword. What am I doing? My thread is running 10,000 times. Every time I am I'm using this shared counter, this particular variable, and I'm incrementing it. And there are two threads which is doing, right? So very obviously, if I'm running it 10,000 times and I have two threads, my output should be 20,000. But the problem has been that when I'm using volatile keyword, I'm not getting 20,000, I'm getting less than 20,000. Reason being, this increment decrement operation had to be atomic. Volatile keyword doesn't support atomicity in nature. And that is why we had to switch to using atomic integer class. We have atomic integer, we have atomic double long, there are all the primitives that is being taken care of, but this is how you use it. You define this object of atomic integer, same thing. Just that instead of doing shared counter plus plus, we will call this particular object and it will have its own increment and get method, we'll call this. Everything else remains the same. When we substitute the volatile variable with this atomic integer, we are getting the output 20,000. The code to this will be linked, you can try it out. So that is the point which we're trying to drive home is you use volatile keyword but if you're doing any compound operation on a shared remember these three three things the flag the highlight compound operation shared variable atomicity if these three are there you have to use an atomic class compound operation is there shared and atomicity you have to use an atomic class if you use volatile it will not work if you use volatile, it will not work. And if you use synchronized keyword, it is going to lower the performance of that. That's it. Okay, so now, so now let's try to do a final distinction, final comparison of all these keywords. Volatile, as we have seen, it ensures the visibility. Synchronized speciality is mutual exclusion, and it will also ensure visibility and atomicity, right? Atomic is used only for providing the atomic operations without using locks. We don't have to use any heavy duty locks. Volatile can be used on variables. Atomic can be also used on variables, but synchronized can. So we are using synchronized, which is only used on blocks and methods. 
volatile implements a non blocking algorithm but synchronized uses a lock based algorithm and even atomic uses non blocking means your threads are not going to wait indefinitely nobody is going to block each other they can continue with their own task independently performance constant we have already talked relatively low for synchronized in comparison to volatile atomic because you are not using locks uh, in case of volatile performance is relatively higher than synchronized and in case of atomic the performance is relatively higher compared to both volatile and synchronized it's even more lightweight next is immune to concurrency hazards such as uh, volatile is immune to this deadlock and live lock whereas synchronized is not immune we can have deadlock in synchronized we have already seen that in the deadlock video and even uh, atomic is immune to deadlock and concurrency hazard so the main point is the visibility so what are the things which we learned the visibility problem which is being solved by con by uh, which is the visibility problem being solved by volatile atomic is solving the problem of doing any kind of compound operations atomically and synchronize the good old synchronized method where you are very much clear about what is the critical section of the code that you want to provide and you are not overusing it or because if you do that it will be an overkill and will lower the performance so these three distinctions we wanted to put across today in our video and i hope we have done that successfully hope you guys have liked the video got some value out of it where to use which one and if you have do like and share um, this video leave us in the comments leave your comments and uh, so you can just drop us comments also in this video about anything else that you would want to watch and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thank you so much for watching